Welcome back, comic readers, to issue six of Comic Corner. I'm Tony. This is Roman. And this is a uh, Grimworks comic review. We're going to bring you this week's, oh, last week's. Last week's floppies, floppies that yeah. we picked up then, with a quick little trade back at the end that you, we think you should guys should read. And at the end of the thing, like always, we'll give you the list for the comics coming out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get this started. Um, Starting off with a disappointment. It, it was a disappointment. For, for you. For it you. was a disappointment. I mean, I like the, I like the Venom, uh -huh. Venomverse stuff. Yep. I've, I've, I've told it. Um, okay. It's good, but I found out that for the Venomverse stuff, you have to like the character that the symbiote is taking over with. Yeah. Because it's just a day in the life of them, with them having the the Venom suit. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, I don't like Gwenpool. I don't know nothing about her. Mm -hmm. Never picked up one of her stuff. Other than, you know, she's almost dead Polish or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand. I, I know she breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, I don't understand what Gwenpool is. Me neither. Because we know Deadpool and he's a mercenary for hire. That's his only job. Yeah, he this Deadpool, one, Deadpool's his own icon. Yeah, you know? Gwen, Gwenpool, she has like a... She, she has an office job. But she moonlights as Gwenpool, and which, the Venom, which, the symbiote finds her. What I understood, Gwenpool has no power other than she came from a different reality, so she knows that yeah. she's in the comics. Yeah, and like the first opening pages, not even a spoiler, in the first opening pages, she just gets shot. Yeah. So, she's like, I, I got no powers, what am I going to do? And she's like, oh wait, I got the symbiote. So it, it just, it's not good. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. I mean, the first one was all. Oh, it was X twenty yeah. three was the character I like, yeah. and they gave me what I like about her mm -hmm. with the whole action, kill and defense stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing people who like Gwenpool will like this because mm -hmm. it gives you cutesy, girly. It's, it's weird things. I, I don't yeah, know. It's kind of like a like a mix of Deadpool meets like an old um, true romance comic from like the 40s yeah. kind of stuff but it's just it's not good it's they just take not away the best thing at a dead point I was the whole kill 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 at least in my opinion yeah well, enough time with this crap I thought it was crap <laughs> it was crap yeah it's just crap yeah yeah and you I mean you were already on the on the on, I'll, the, I'll on the lines and rims of I don't really care for the Venomverse yeah unless you know to the Venomverse actually starts mhm mm so I'm pretty sure, unless they give you a character like you enjoy from Marvel, yeah, you're gonna be like, hmm. yeah, yeah. It just it's all about the characters. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care much for X23, and I don't, I don't. Even I'm know excited for the next for, issue though. Well, who is Ghost Rider? Okay. <laughs> um, I like all the weird characters in Marvel. You like all the nineties fucking shoot them up. Fuck guys. yeah, Ghost that, That's fine. Everybody. I don't know. I wonder what Ghost Rider they're gonna use too. Oh, they're gonna use like the old school ones, or they're gonna yeah, use like, the, the new Mexican one, or the one? little Mexican, or the biker one, or mm -hmm. the chick. There's been a lot of Ghost Riders, and they're all been kind of decent. But yeah, Honestly, yeah. I'm waiting for the next issue of that. Uh, next one is gonna be uh, a good comic. It's just not a freak of the week. No, it's not. It's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to like, you know, web slingers, and um, there's been a lot of Spider Man lately. There has been, a but uh, Spider Man's always one of those characters that I just like, no matter what. One of the few Marvel characters that I'm actually like, okay, I'll I'll sit through almost anything just for that because I like that character so much. Yeah, I mean, Peter Parker's all right, and Mom Runners, I think, is a better story. Uh, it I ain't, it uh, ain't, oh, who is that? Spider-Man from Texas. Spider-Man from Texas. Yeah. He was, there was, there was a Spider-Man. Oh, Spider -Man. The, the, Sky, the Scarlet the Spider? The Scarlet Spider, there yeah, you go. Yeah, that yeah. was my favorite just because he was like from, from Texas. Houston. <laughs> yeah, he was the one from Houston. Uh-huh. Yeah, but yeah, well, let's put it up. Let's put it up. Yeah. So, um, last. This is la Spider Man Two, number one. Was it last year? No, this was a few years back. A few years back if, when if, the Spider Man. If you're came, talking about Spider Man, Spider -Man from, yeah, the, Spider -Man. the first one. Yeah, that was like four years ago. Was maybe? it? Yeah. It was I, good. I mean, I'll double check. Let me see. I mean, Spider Man was good. The whole cross of of um, Spider Man into different realities. Mm -hmm. I like that. I really enjoyed it. Of Peter Parker find out that you know he can die. <laughs> yeah. I know that it crosses the hero's mind. I'm like, oh shit! Uh, it's always it's always there somewhere. 
Um, it keeps giving me Spider Man. Yeah, so it, the first one, it was Peter Parker meets Mara Morales. Mm -hmm. He finds out that uh, Peter Parker died in his reality, so he took over the mantle of the Spider Man. Yeah, the whole thing was that uh, Mephisto, um, not Mephisto, uh, who's the fishbowl head? I keep forgetting his name. Mysterio? M Mysterio, yeah, Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> was the yeah, fishbowl hit. Yeah. Uh, he's the uh, he found a way to get from the Marvel six one six, which is the normal universe that everybody knows, to the Ultimate Universe, and it bled. And basically, Peter Parker meets Miles Morales, and the Ultimate Universe uh, Aunt May, and yeah, and it meets the reality of the leftovers of his life. Yeah, and uh, there it's kind of a sweet thing by the end of the book that Peter Parker sees Aunt May, and Aunt May was like, "I don't know you, but." I don't know you specifically, but I now see what kind of man Peter would be. Oh yeah, because people up. forget Ultimate Spider-Man. He was younger. Yes, he was. Uh, he was a kid. Yeah, because the six one six was actually already older. He was already married to Mary at, Jane. At, no, at this point, he was already divorced. <laughs> from Mary okay, Jane. so he was yeah. older. Yeah. Yeah, he already had gone through the ins and out of life. So he was like, "Oh man, I can't believe that happened." So yeah, he gets me my eyes, and they take down the bad guy together. Holy hell, this is way older than I thought. It's five years ago. Really? <laughs> the original Spider-Man was five years ago. It hasn't even seen that long. Yeah, it does not. But there you go. Hey, but it was a good, it's a good read. Mm -hmm. It's a slow start because it was... You know, like I said, I was tired of Spider-Man, so they didn't really give you anything new. Uh, yeah, um, it's a bit of a slow start just because they're kind of setting up the way that the whole universe has been changed since Secret Wars. Yeah. Um, kind of the ultimate universe is pseudo dead um because there's still <laughs> ultimate comics that are coming out but they're bleeding is because they're bleeding through different universes right so that's the thing i don't know because i got so i love the ultimate universe but since they started doing all the secret wars and then they did like the ultimate be, the ultimates the end and all this other stuff it really got me burnt out on the ultimate yeah, uh, to be universe. honest i stopped reading off their ultimate the yeah. ultimate stuff i stopped which, which I was like been over but yeah, yeah. But Spider Man um, was one of the comics that did pick up after mm -hmm. Ultimatum. And no. it was good, but it was I mean, it had to really do about one universe to the other. It was just yeah. one one Spider Man means the other and they take down a big bad guy. Yeah, and in Spider Man two it's sort of the same thing, but if you remember at the end of the first run, there was a time in which Peter Parker was like, Miles Morales, who is he in this universe? And he looks it up, and he's like, no, he... I think he has an expression like, no way. Yeah, or, so it kind of continues off that. Yeah, so it kind of continues off of that. Um, so, it's interesting. Apparently, Miles is... Uh, within the first two pages, you find out that Miles has more powers than he originally had. So... Oh, yeah, well, secret powers. Yeah, so he has secret powers that he's from everybody, which is cool. Which um, looked it look, it look a little bit, or it read a little bit like mm -hmm. Peter Parker was jealous. A little bit, yeah. Cause well, it, I mean, he totally is. Because it tells you that, that Mars Morales could be, like, at least two times, three times stronger than Spider-Man. Because mm -hmm. he has that whole toxic thing, too, right? Yeah, oh, he that calls poison, it... That poison jab, whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's called, like, a Venom spark or a Venom Yeah, and then he bite. had that, that secret one that they show this one. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, man, I can't believe that. So, yeah, Spider-Man's kind of jealous. He's like, I only have, like, the powers I have, but he keeps evolving somehow. And again... Um, and again, this comic kind of, at the end, makes you want to pick up the next issue. Yeah, um, I'm not a big, I'm not the biggest fan. I do like the character, but I'm not the biggest fan of the the end villain that comes out. <laughs> um, so, but it is enough to get me really uh, pick up the rest of them. Yeah, it just makes you be like, oh, okay, what's gonna go down? Yeah, especially if it's a mini series like five issues, I'm I'm in. So uh, it was really good. It just wasn't the best comic no. this week. The art was good too. Yes, the writing needs a little bit of help, but it's enough to be uh, like, okay, it's Bendis. He's just, good. Yeah, B Bendis is just doing his thing. He's trying like to I said, make slow startup, but it'll get you there. But yeah, like it. I recommend it. All right, we're gonna get into a surprise. Yeah, choice. This really was. <clears throat> I don't uh, know if you remember last week. Uh, we we're going through the comics that are gonna come out this week, and for some reason, I thought there was gonna be the new Seven York. Yeah, I thought it was going to be, and I said it. I may have just overlooked that or read the wrong one. Probably. I have. I have a tendency to do I'm that. Pretty sure there's another a DC comic that started is another run. Yeah, it's our a, a number yeah, one. Because we kind of just go through the list just yeah. to make it convenient and quick for you guys. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 
I, I ask him, hey man, what comics you want? And mm-hmm. I pick them up. And um, I picked it up. I was like, eh. Well, me, myself, like, personally, yeah. I don't pick up Superman or yeah. any action comics. But we did go over this in past issues where when we reviewed the, the actual Rebirth Superman, yeah. where like there's something special about Superman and the people can get it right. It's just very... Often a lot of people just see it as like, oh, he's just a fucking... He's the prototypical super guy that's... I don't care. You see, but the thing is, I didn't like it just because of Superman. I don't care. They mm-hmm. they gave him a f- like a uh, uh, handicap in this one. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh man, how's he gonna get over it? Mm-hmm. He's a man of steel. He'll find a way. Yeah, I mean, that's, right? But you, you but can make that argument for any true any hero. True, but they finally, I never I never thought about this, but mm-hmm. they finally gave him. I don't know if you guys are reading. I don't want to. I want to spoil it real quick. They gave mm-hmm. him a gang of bad guys to fight all at once. Yeah, we're not gonna say who's in the gang, but. It's a group, and it's it's it, Superman universe. Yeah. Like, you know how when when Justice League has to fight like the big bads, and mm-hmm. it's to like the main villain of every other superhero that kind of comes together, but like, oh, we gotta destroy the world or take over the world, whatever. Yeah. This time they got all the villains from Superman, mm-hmm. all, all the good ones. At least in my opinion. I think there's some other ones that are good, but these are... Uh, the thing is, like, it's weird because they're not all good. They're not, but they all pay, like, a big importance. But they are... They are... They range anywhere from A-plus to, like, C. You know what makes them good? Their leader. Their leader knows their, their strengths, their weaknesses, and knows how to use them. They're, That's what I found. Their, their leader is, if you know Superman... It's not Lex Luthor, I'll tell you that. It's not. But it's somebody, it's his, like, next biggest villain. All right, so they get, this is a group of bad guys, yeah. and they're like, we want to destroy Spider-Man. They're looking for something. Mm-hmm. They're looking for something that Spider- uh, Spider-Man, Superman has, and they want it. Mm-hmm. Sp- uh, Superman is handicapped. Yes. So I'm guessing he's he caught him. Yeah, he's, he's blind. Um, he calls up a group of good guys. Yeah. Again. All Superman world. Yeah. Which, there's one or two that be like, why are you in there? Mm-hmm. Again, they serve their purpose. Yeah, for sure. I was intrigued. I kind of, I was reading it. I was like, oh man, I can't believe this is going on. Mm-hmm. I was like, what issue is this? I was like, I got to go buy them. I started counting on my fingers. It's like, oh, this is part five. Yeah. I was like, I got to go buy issue this, this, this. I was, mm-hmm. I was doing all math and shit in my head. Yeah, yeah. Because I just want to get the whole story. Mm-hmm. It's that good, guys. It's that good. Mm-hmm. It could have been pick of the week, but... I'm lost in some parts, mm. but you guys could pick it up. You should pick up this and the ones before and be like, yeah. Yeah, the the thing with this one is um, I had always seen action comics. I read the <laughs> Superman one um, just because I like the writer a lot. Again, I like writers. Um, so I saw Dan Jurgens on this, and Dan Jurgens has been... That's his name? Dan Jurgens. yeah. <laughs> he, he's been a writer for fucking ever. I mean... He's responsible for killing Superman in the first place. The Doomsday thing. Mm-hmm. That was him writing. The thing is, that story kind of sucked if you actually read it. Everybody, Doomsday? Everybody thinks it's good no. until you actually read it and then you realize it's trash. The, the but, moment is good. The comic yeah, it, was... It, it, it's, it's iconic, for sure. Yeah. That, that one pat... The, the, the splash page of him dying in Lois's arms. Yeah, it's it's iconic for sure. And the, the whole punch bag. Yeah, the the, the poly bag. They were they were they're like yeah they're they're the doomsdays on this side mm-hmm. of the panel. He's on the side they're punching each other. Yeah, they're exactly. all bleeding and stuff. Yeah, I, I mean all, awesome splash pages and even like the poly bag that it came in with you know the bloody s. Oh, that super was iconic. Thing is, it's a bad comic. And, it is. And Dan Jurgens is kind of hit or miss, and he. I was scared to pick up action comics, but now that I know it leads up to this, I'm willing. To, I'm going to buy those action comics that came before this for sure. So hunt them down. Tell yeah, them. exactly. I'll, I'll hunt them down for both of us. Don't hunt down it. the floppies. But yeah, uh, for sure, a really surprising uh, pick because of the writer for me. A surprising pick for him because he doesn't like Superman. It doesn't so. like Superman, but it has badass art and it's action packed. I'm and just, it has. I'm a fan of teams. Yeah. It has team versus team, and Superman's getting his ass beat. I'm, I'm, I know he's. Gonna, I know he's gonna win. I know uh, this. I'm a fan of this, and I'm waiting for that to come into the into this story. There, there, because there's all, there always has to be heart in the Superman. Of story. course, because for surprising, Superman is hiding his son, mm-hmm. and these villains didn't know 
he had a son, mm-hmm. so that's gonna give him a, a weakness. Yeah. That's gonna give him a tool that they could use against him. Can't wait for. I'm, I actually want to see what they do with that. That's good. It's good. All right, uh, let's get down to some pick of the weeks. Yeah, uh, we have different picks of the week, of so course. it is hard for us to agree on shit. It is. I mean. But th- that's what makes a good show, right? You well, can't be like, yes, 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 yes. No, nah, no. Nah, I gotta tell you, you know what? You suck. And mm-hmm. then you'd be like, really? I'm the one that sucks? And then, you know, cuss word at me and I cuss word at you, but friendship. <laughs> yeah. You picked a shitty comic last week. You picked a shitty comic this week. So I, I, I don't know. You know what? Real quick, we didn't put it up here. But uh-huh. fuck you, Dynamite. You got me again. You motherfuckers took my money. I of the art. Them. And I was like, I gotta just fucking standard like five more seconds and kind of just scan to the comics and be like, nah, this ain't for me. I bought a dynamite comic for the art right. and the story. Well, we we don't we, we don't have it at hand right now, and I don't even want to show it off. It's bad. Uh, what skin and earth? Yeah, I think it's called. Yeah. It's terrible. It's by Lights. She's like an she's a an artist, a singer. I don't know. Oh, she's one of those transition artists that yeah. I could sing so I could write comics. Yeah, she, she writes a shitty comic. Or whoever <laughs> like helped her write this comic is bad. It was bad. Because I'm going to spoil the whole fucking thing. Apparently, it's a post-apocalyptic love story, which is fine. I could go with that. The point is, you don't give us anything to go on with the actual apocalypse, like why everybody's dead. They just say, oh, it's a fucking green gas. If I can kill it's like it's the end of the world, but it's, now they're in love. Yeah, and it's fucking stupid. I'm, I'm fine, and I understand that maybe that's that's not the, the center of that comic. It's supposed to be a romantic tale, but you have to add some sort of stakes into it besides just a vague, like, it's apocalypse so you can get sick. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work. That's stupid. It, it doesn't get yeah, you Dynamite, Dynamite, if anybody who likes Dynamite or Dynamite Self finds a way to fucking watch this video, you guys suck. You guys gotta, you know, take a little bit of money of the artists and give it to writers because fuck. Oh, you know, you keep well, doing what you're doing, putting badass covers and taking my money because I'm dumb. You keep doing that. But yeah. uh, the only Dynamite, I'm telling you, I've only liked a handful of Dynamite comics. But enough of that garbage talk. Let's get to some real good comics. All right. So my favorite week is Dark Days, The Casting. It's a prelude to uh, the DC. Uh, it's looking like a fall, man, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, because by the time the, this is going to come out, like around August. Yeah. So I, I guess mid, the end of summer, begin of fall. Yeah, there's no real like true summer event. I guess they're kind of trying to get away from that, which is a good thing because what I think they're doing is they're, they're 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 having like a fall event and a spring event and summer and winter like hype ups. It's possible, but I think um, that uh, Doomsday Clock is summer. But it hasn't come year. out, has it? I think it's actually next year. Really? I'll have to double check, but I think it might be next year. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really follow DC. I'm a Marvel fan. I'm a Marvel fan, and DC is only Shazam and Deathstroke. And Deathstroke, we covered last week in Shazam. Feels like it's coming. Yeah. Um, Feels like it's coming. It's but, my pick of the week just because it's explaining a little more characters. Um, now, to spoil a little bit or to not spoil is the question. You know what? Give them a taste. Just a taste. Just a little spoil. Just a little bit. Okay. You know how drug dealers, you know mm-hmm. how drug dealers they give you the free, well, the free one first and then you're like, tell us more. Here's the thing. I'll give you, I'll give you a few spoilers. One is only going to matter to like literally like three of you if you <laughs> watch this. Um, if more people do watch this, you'll probably understand. But uh, first thing, Joker's back. Yes, yes. Uh, he was at the end of the previous comic, which was uh, Dark Days the Forge. So Dark Days the Forge and then this Dark Days the Casting mm-hmm. are kind of preludes to this uh, thing called Metal. And that's going to be like the Batman event. It's the crappiest name to name anything, but it's yeah. F- it's fucking Metal, bro. Yeah. Um, but, you know what? Joker's back. And yes. And before he goes, I remember I want to tell you guys the last time I was like, I don't know what, I don't like what they're doing with the character. Mm-hmm. Because they're not leaving a lot of things explained mm-hmm. or they're leaving things like open or like, why is he this character now? Mm-hmm. This comic. Yeah, um, it kind it sort of pulls everything together. Yeah, not, kind of. Not, right? not entirely. There's still some holes that will always be holes. But for the fact, the thing is Joker's back. All right? I, I, well, I, felt, I felt that for Joker alone as a mm-hmm. character, they kind of 
filled in the gaps. It almost went full circle. No, I'll explain off camera why well, there's a big hole. <laughs> um, there's like a tremendous, like it's fucking uh, a building fell through the hole because there's something really big. And I'll, again, I'll explain that after. Anyways, keep telling um, the people why this is fake. The, the Joker is in a weird spot. He's pretty much figured out kind of everything. the same thing that Batman has figured out. The only thing is, Batman is kind of in the Justice League, so he understands kind of the, um, he understands more of the universe, and Joker has never been that, so they're kind of making that so with this. It's kind of weird, I, I'm not totally on board, but maybe they'll find a way to just sell it to me, I don't know. Um, one of the other things is, there's a particular... A uh, lightning bolt that is gonna hit. Some would say with the speed of Mercury. Yes. So all the magic in the world, baby. Yeah, and um, another one is. No, I know it. They bring back a set of characters that is so weird, and I would love to see them come fully come back. But I'm just going to say the phrase Challenger Mountain. And for all of you hardcore DC heads, you should know what that is. So. Well, you seen the uh, underground dudes? No. Nothing like that. But either way, it is a very good comic. It's really kind of fleshing out what's going on on a universal scale more than just on right here, now. Yeah. It seems like it's a, it's a they're making it seem like, oh man, the whole comic universe is in peril like past of, present and future isn't it but it's focused on two characters see Pretty i was a little lost all right i'm not a big dc head yeah i kind of know enough to be like oh, okay mm -hmm. like the lightning bolt mm -hmm. bam yeah. year before i read the layers and shit i yeah. go okay i know what happened yeah off the beginning i was like oh this is oh. i got excited bam yeah. joker i understand mm -hmm. better there's some characters i have to stop and ask him because he's batman everything I was at one point now. Batman, I don't know. I don't give. I don't care for Batman and his lackeys and his underlings and his little boys he likes to touch. Right? I ain't know none of that. So you have to kind of know a little bit of that. But at the end, it got me. It got me to want to be okay. I want to see what happened. So just the fucking the last picture. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It's like oh, but then again, I was like oh, really? That's what they're leading to? Sort of. Um, I was like all this, all this fucking. Explanations for this. This is really simplified. I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but the last art you'll get, you'll get. There, I think you're missing something. I'll explain it on yeah. camera. I think you're missing a big picture of that. I probably am because, like I said, I pick DC comics randomly from here to there, unless they're the characters I like, and my characters I like are not mainline stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna be like we know everything. Because mm -hmm. I don't read Superman, I don't read Batman, I don't read Wonder Woman, Flash. Sometimes Aquaman, I'm kind of picking it up again because fuck. All right, but everything else. But yeah, but you should guys, you should pick it up. You should For pick sure. it up. It's, it's a good. It's leading to a good event. For sure. And metal starts, uh, I believe, uh, August? August 16th. Is this is the last one, right? This is the last one. The last the, prelude. This is the last prelude before the actual event. Yeah, because at the end, of the, like I said, the end page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Metal. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna look that up, and while you set up your, uh... I'm gonna set this up. All right, guys. So we're getting to my pick of the week. It's a random one. It's a weird one, but damn, I enjoy reading it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's right holding me out lost. Plus, look at that cover. We were just talking about iconic covers. Yeah, there it's, it is. It's a parody of an iconic cover. Yes, yeah, sure. it is. Um. <clears throat> um. Is what Red Hood and the Outlaws number twelve? Yeah. Yeah. It's just. I don't know if it's a start of a new art, but it's like a it single is. issue. It is. It's part one of. Uh, I don't remember what it's. It's called, it's called Meet uh, the Bizarro. The Life of Bizarro, yeah. part one. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I stopped reading Red Hood and Alice mm -hmm. for a little bit. I was maybe like five issues behind, so I picked this up because he's, he's again new art. Mm -hmm. Got review characters are like. I was surprised. Um, for some reason, Red Hood. And a girl, I'm not gonna let you, you guys read it. Um, have Bizarro on her team, mm -hmm. but it's not the Bizarro we grew up with, it's not yeah. that 
weird looking Bizarro that talks well, like it's it's not the Bizarro that talks in reverse. Um, it's not that weird looking Bizarro. He, this Bizarro looks strong. Looks like now if if you if you read um pre uh, well with the new fifty two yeah um if you read some of the B- Superman stuff which I know you didn't um but. Uh, he does come out in there and he is different. He's way different. He, yeah. is, he is more like a, a jacked Bizarro. Yeah, Bizarro. I like him. I lo- this, all right. So let me tell you guys, this is what it felt like me. Mm-hmm. It felt like Bizarro is Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Frankenstein. Yes. And I, and that's how they wrote him. Mm-hmm. They wrote him like a big, strong lug that people are, are confused about him because, you know, he's he is great. He's all big and muscular, and he was running around with a Superman suit, mm-hmm. but with a mentality or, or almost the mentality of a kid. Yeah, um, I mean, think of like the the uh, classic uh, like movie Frankenstein, and that's pretty much what they did. Yeah, that's exactly like, what they did. Um, that's why I like this one. That's was, that's why it was my pick of the week because mm-hmm. the classic Frankenstein stuff mm-hmm. I loved, and I it sucks because I know. You have to like Bizarro on this issue. You have to mm-hmm. have that connection of why Red Hood and him are buddies and pals mm-hmm. and, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. But, again, going to the classics, they give you a fight of Frankenstein versus a zombie. Mm-hmm. A, f- a, a famous like, DC zombie. Yeah. And it's, it's action-packed. Most of it is because it's... Most of it is just, like... All right, something's happening. There's a big bad guy. Mm-hmm. He comes and just pounds a shit at everybody. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was arch great. Yeah. Action pack. Beat him up. Mm-hmm. Frankenstein versus zombies. Mm-hmm. Just with a DC touch. Yeah. Um, when I first read it, I thought it was trash. I started thinking about it and started thinking about the things that it, they're trying to do. And I don't think it's trash. I think it's interesting, but... The thing is, like, when you say Frankenstein, there is actually a DC Comics Frankenstein. Yeah, I read it. I picked so, them up. So, but that Frankenstein but is like Marvel's Hulk. He's that like, yeah, he is intelligent. He's intelligent. He's and a he, commander of things. He just has a super he, strength. but he's all he's all magic instead of yep. like by science. Yep. So I guess they, that's where they said like, oh, this is like a another Frankenstein. Uh, I was yeah, he was built by. Oh, God. Cannabis. Cannabis. I was yeah. gonna call it Star Labs. <laughs> no, but uh, he's he, he's made by cannabis. That one. Um, yeah. Cannabis. So he's science made. Mm-hmm. Another another touch for, to the Frankenstein stuff. Yeah, which he's always been science made. Uh, he was made by Lex Luthor at a New Fifty Two, and I think in the. I don't know. I think what? it was created like in in the old universe. I just yeah. don't remember who created him. I think it was Lex Luthor still. Was he? Yeah. I thought Bizarro was just a being from a different universe. No. It turns out like there's like a whole universe later. That's Bizarro people, but right? He, it's like he made it. He made it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Like there was... It's, it's really weird because it's actually an action comic where they actually reveal that there's a Bizarro world. I know there's a Bizarro there's world. There's a Bizarro flash. He's super slow instead of fast. <laughs> So it's, it's all reversed, which is, is, I guess maybe that's why it's weird to me. I've always seen Bizarro really as a, like a, a funny character. Yeah. And, and he's now, not really reverse Superman because he almost has the same powers, doesn't he? No. No? He has, instead of uh, heat vision, it's ice vision. Oh, okay, so he is reverse. Yeah. And like small things. Cause yeah, he- they're small things, but mm-hmm. the thing is... I just didn't know really how to handle it. After thinking about it, I'm okay with it. It's just not the best written comic, and it's not my favorite. It's not there for the writing. Is there? Yeah. You like Frankenstein? You like action pack? You like beat 'em up? Mm-hmm. Read it. Yeah. You read it for like a novel or a book? Read the casting. <laughs> yeah. The casting is so, very so worried. So you you see like our differences and and what yeah. we pick. It's more he's more an action guy. I'm more of kind of a, a writer guy. And the uh, art pops out, man. I love fight scene art. Mm-hmm. It just makes oh, me yeah, tingle all over. The art is good. It's just this writer, I'm not a... I really hate him. To be honest I, with I don't you. really care for the writers. But uh, again, I, yeah. I'm, I will give it another shot to kind of see what happens. 
Um, yeah, because the ending gets you once you buy in another. Yeah, issue. yeah. The, the ending, of course, will get you. But um, yeah, that's really all I can say about it. It's right. it's decent. Time for our trade bag. I was so excited to review this stupid trade bag. Yeah. Because god damn, he's awesome. It is Shazam and the Monster Society of Evil. It's a big title, right? It is. But it's written by Jeff Smith. And if you know comics, you know that that's the uh, creator and writer and artist for Bones. Um, Which is it's a decent comic. Yeah, it's a fun, I, it's a fun it's, little comic. It's more, it seems more like cartoons to me. Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. it. He's uh, He calls himself a cartoonist. Yeah. Um, I don't art, know if he's actually the, done cartoons. And the art is that way, so it's mm-hmm. cartoonist. It's like if you pick up the Sunday paper. Yeah. I know nobody reads the paper no more. But uh, if you used to. Constantly used to read the fucking Family Circus. Garfield shit. Mm-hmm. And all that. Um, it's just like that. Mm-hmm. But it's an awesome character. Shazam. I agree. It's uh, a little touch of the origins. Yes. If you guys don't know Shazam, great way to start to know the character. Mm-hmm. By this one, you and me. And you know, well, I'm, I'm a fan of Shazam. I kind of knew the origins and stuff. Just, you know, something read through. Yeah. Character rights. You know, you got to buy the stuff so they keep going, oh, look, this comic sold. Maybe we should write more of him. Yeah. That's my mentality. Yeah. Vote with your wallet. <clears throat> but the first page is an introduction, or I forgot what they're called. I know there's a name. For it, where the, where art, other artists or writers kind of introduce the whole book. Oh, it's an introduction. Um, that's what they call it. It's just or a forward, I guess you could say. Something like that. Um, um, by a really good artist. Yeah. One, one of, of the favorites. artists that he put me up to because it was he has a one of the best watercolor stuff. It's not watercolor. It's not. No, that's full paints. Really? Um, yeah, uh, it's Alex Ross. Yeah, um, that looks, he, that he, does, he does really realist like all. Sort of for a photo realistic. You can call it uh, faux realistic. Yeah, but his colors are weird though. Cause that's why I thought it was watercolor because it looks, it has that that feel to he, it. He is a, a, a classically trained artist. He went to the the I think he went to the Art Institute of Chicago, if I'm not mistaken, which is like a big art school, like one of the best in the in. I don't classic. know his sister. I just know he does pre. Again, I do a lot of research on things people I like, but. Uh, yeah, Alex Ross has a very sweet... Um, and I look, I look for all the pretty pictures. Yeah. Once I know the name, I just type it in and be like, oh, shit, this yeah. uh, suffered justice and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The single panels he did in... Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? It was... Uh, that comic. It's the same cover for... That. It was a Grant Morrison run. That bad, 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 bad. The Batman stuff? No, it was uh, uh, one of the events... Final Crisis? That was not his... Uh, didn't he do uh, some of he, the... He didn't do the alternate, no. He didn't do one of the alternates? No, no that's uh, J.G. Jones. Ah, whose alternate is it? Yeah, I know he did an event where he did the alternate. It was the single ones that I have. Some no, no, the, 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 the thing you're talking about is Final Crisis had... The, the, the regular covers mm-hmm. had the two bars that said Final Crisis on either no, side. No, but there was... Um, th- and is then, it the bad guy ones? When they were introducing the villain, yeah, he fo- did? Uh, foe. What yeah, they call it, yeah, 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 foe. Mm-hmm. He did some of those, right? Yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah, it, those it, was, it was like Black Adam. And, yeah, there yeah, you go. Guys, yeah. You see, I kind of know my stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not good with names, but I thought you were talking about Final Crisis, and I was like, the alternate for the alternate covers for Final Crisis was are, the big old map. It, one, it was just a, a single, yeah. like a single. Uh, like full cover art of a, of a character like the house of m style where you had the two bars in the, in the middle well that was that the, those the are like the original ones. yes but the the alternate versions for those which are the ones i have because i loved them is jg jones i bought anyway. all that and i just put it away because it was garbage final, that, final crisis was garbage for a lot of people it is garbage for me it was a real big stepping stone for me and I read that book and, in and out and cause you like DC and yes. B you like Grant Morrison yes. and, and his style cookie writing and and C I read that thing like not kidding you like 10 times so I can get everything it's one of those things you have to read from beginning to end yes but enough yeah. of that crap we're just yeah <laughs> Shazam Shazam. Um, Shazam it's a good place to start if you want to learn the character it's a great origin story mm-hmm. uh, the art's great Alex Ross introduces it amazingly mm-hmm. it kind of makes you like oh, okay you kind of understand mm-hmm. the world which is a little bit better and mm-hmm. the writer too what do you think of it I thought it was good. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is that they introduced Mary Marvel, 
Um, she's on the back cover. We'll yeah, show that maybe yeah. later. But um, the the story is good. It's a, it's a, it has a very cartoony kind of cutesy vibe to it. Um, but with a deep story. But with a yeah, a deep story. It's something yeah. that you wouldn't think um, for something this kind of cutesy. You think it's maybe for kids. It's really not for kids. It's they, not for kids. They it use a dark, lot of guys. It, it, there is like some things. Um, one of my favorite things about the comic is really weird is Mary Marvel and the way that it all kind of comes together because when Billy Batson actually turns into Shaz Shazam he's not replacing him in any way yeah <laughs> he's basically a future version of himself or how he will all how he how, how he, eventually would get to how he sees himself as an adult mm -hmm. and that's what Shazam is and then Mary Marvel gets struck by a really weird little little kind of throwaway thing uh, in one of the panels, how she gets the powers. And when she gets the powers, she's still small. And you don't understand why. And I thought about it, and I, the reason I loved it is because Billy Batson, since that's his little sister, like, she's always going to be that cute little sister. Yep. No matter what. Like, no matter how much she grows up, She's always gonna be that like she's always gonna be that size in his eyes. Yep. So it was just really really cute moment, and I thought it was really sweet. I like the transitions they have with future of oh, Shazam and the Wizard. Yeah, that shit's fucking amazing. Yeah, because you really. he know he's like the way they talk about it. He doesn't replace them, but they're two different identities. The stuff that Shazam kind of knows and stuff, Billy doesn't. Yeah. So he gets, I think he gets like a, a tenth of the information. Mm -hmm. He semi transforms. Yeah. So him and the wizard have these grown up conversations, and he turns back to me and he's like, "What happened?" Yeah, exactly. I was like, "That's he, awesome." He still doesn't understand as a kid. I'm always, the reason I like Shazam so much is that they give a little kid the ultimate power, mm -hmm. and he, and the and the stuff I he still, Shazam still had that mentality of a little kid, mm -hmm. which is cool. And plus, he could beat Superman because Superman has this thing for against magic. Yeah, um, actually, that's why I like Shazam, uh, or you know, uh, Billy Batson in general, is because it's so easy to just draw parallels between Captain Marvel or Shazam. Now he's called I keep mm -hmm. calling Captain Marvel, um, but Shazam and Superman, like, oh, they're both strong. They're both big white guys. Basically, they have slick back hair. Well, and you know they both fly kind of things like that but what makes Shazam his own character is that it's all magic and it's all magic in that kid mentality yeah and you can see like you can maybe draw like a little parallel where like kids want to be Superman and Billy Batson's kind of like us as kids you know why you should be a strong guy if you guys are a fan of the 90s anime yeah Mm -hmm. Billy Batson goes. You're always oh, what I admire. Yeah, two thousands. He's like, you're always what he, he was fighting uh, Superman. Yeah, he's Justice like, League Unlimited. I think. He's like, you're always what I admire. You, you're worse. You want? I want to become you. Mm -hmm. So I was thought he was like, oh, okay, that's why he looks like that. Yeah, he wears almost the same kind of of of, of uh, costume and stuff because mm -hmm. he wants to be Superman. Yeah, but Superman is too straight edge. While Shazam kind of again. That, that mentality of... He understands... It's just Billy Batson is an orphan. So he is. he's seen a different side of the world that Superman will never well, see. Superman like, had caring parents and yeah. the good life. And he's always had his strength and shit. Yeah. Billy Batson got it when he was in a dark space. Yeah. He got it when... After being homeless and mistreated and mm -hmm. down in dumps but even it, like the the beauty part about that is that no he matter he stayed with a good heart exactly like the, the world can beat you to shit like just real talk the world yeah. can beat you to shit and it can easily take away your happiness and you would think yeah that was the thing it was like man if this if i was this little kid that had been through all this shit and mm -hmm. someone gives me great power mm -hmm. first thing i'll do is fuck the world up yeah you, i would be selfish as fuck and do all this crap You'd be for kid, me. You'd be Kid Marvel from uh, or uh, what is it, Miracle Kid from Miracle Man. And that's why he died. That uh, the Alan Moore stuff. It's another which one. Good. It's a good one. Maybe yeah. cover it later. Yeah. But yeah, good read. You want to get to know the character. You yeah. want to get a dark, good story. Mm -hmm. It's not for kids. It's not because again, Billy Batsy goes through some shit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like magic, 
if you want to see something that could beat up Superman, pick it up. <laughs> I mean, technically you can, but we'll see. Anyways. I, I want to see that, that match. They have, you know, there's a whole anime for that? Like an actual DC movie? There is. There, oh, yeah, there it's is. It's called yeah. Superman vs. Shazam? Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, it was good. Where, oh, where he hugs them and he's all, Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. 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 Yeah, he's all burn up. Oh, yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, it's good. All um, right. But yeah, that was the this was, trade back. So. That was the trade back in this week's floppiest. Mm-hmm. Let's get to the nitty gritty and your upcoming list. All right, so your comics for Wednesday, July nineteenth, which is tomorrow. Yo, excuse me, burped. Uh, Marvel starts with uh, all new Guardians of the Galaxy number six. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number 9, America number 5, Astonishing X-Men number 1, which is a... is that a... a Charles Soul. Okay, cool. Um, Daredevil number 24, Darth Maul number 5. Star Dead- Wars? Yeah. Okay. Um, Deadpool Kills Marvel Universe again number 2. Uh, Doctor Strange number 23. Uh, Generations Preview, which I believe would just be free, to be honest with you. Yeah, it looks like it's free. Um, Invincible Iron Man number 9, Luke Cage number 3, Marvel's Thor Ragnarok Prelude number 2. That's uh, uh, MCU tie-in, the actual movies. Uh, Mighty Thor number 21, Monsters Unleashed number 4, Ms. Marvel number 20, uh, number 20 actually. Uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man number 2. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to pick that up. Oh, but fuck. <laughs> Royals number five. Secret Empire number six, which I believe is the end. Um, it might be. It might not. Honestly, I don't care. Um, Secret Empire. Brave New World number four. Spider-Man 2099 number 25. Star Wars Poe Dameron number 17. Totally Awesome Hulk number 21. Ultimates 2 number nine. You see, they're still doing Ultimates comics. I'm not too sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh god, U.S. Avengers, number eight, uh, X-Men Gold, number eight. And oh man, it looks like it's going to be a rough week for Marvel. Marvel is I saw this list and I don't want to pick nothing other than the Deadpool. I might pick up Astonishing X-Men just because I like Charles Soule as a writer, but that's even kind of a hard sell yeah. for me. Let's see if we can, maybe DC, DC can read, you know, make the week a little bit better. It's already looking up, baby. Aquaman, number 26, definitely getting that shit. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, Batman number 27. We might get that. Uh, is that the... That's the riddles and whatever the fuck. Man, that shit's three. coming out quick. Is it yeah, a weekly thing? I think Batman is bi-weekly. Is it bi-weekly? I think Detectives is monthly, while Batman is bi-weekly. Stupid DC wants all my money. Yep. Uh, right. Batman 66 meets the Legion of Superheroes number one. What? Damn it. I don't like Batman 66 comic books. Yeah, I think it might be a tribute to... Um, yeah, I'm sure that... I don't know if they're doing that. To Adam West? Uh, I know in all the DC books that you picked up, it Man actually Beach. had a tribute to Adam West, which is very cool. Um, mm-hmm. But the comics are kind of weird, and I'm not too stoked had, on them. Because they had that corny 60s rating. Yeah. Um, but it does meet the Legion of Superheroes, and I'm a fan of the Legion from the 31st century. Uh, Batwoman, number five. Uh, Cave Carlson has a cybernetic eye, number ten. I actually want to pick one of those up. Yeah, I want to, I think... That's if, the, that's the company that's written by the dude from My Chemical Romance. Yeah. You know what, I'm, I'm calling it up, I'm, uh, in the next few weeks, I'm going to review Doom Patrol. So we'll review Doom Patrol, though. I picked it up somewhere in my house. Well, the, the graphic novel? Yeah, the tree book. I oh, told you. I didn't. I think I picked it up when I bought Black Science. All right, we're going to have to look that up. I've been wanting to read it because I keep hearing really good stuff of his writing. Mm-hmm. And then and that young animal company he picked mm-hmm. up or he made or whatever it is. His imprint. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. That's so many words. Anyway, I know. I know. <laughs> um, all his stuff is weird, kooky mm-hmm. style. And I love that stuff. Yeah. I did like, like, you guys don't know, he read Umbrella Academy, mm-hmm. which got picked up. By Netflix, I think they're gonna make an animated of it. Are they? Yeah, I think so. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I, I really do. Bro, like Cam Cam is one of the good ones. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, Cape Carson has seven and nine number ten is where we left off. Uh, DC Comics Bombshells number thirty one. Why? 
I don't know. Anyways. I mean, they started a comic basically to sell statues. Pretty much. I don't like that, DC. Eh. But you got to do what you got to do to make money, so I understand. True. Uh, DC Comics Justice League Essentials Aquaman number one. There's also the same title for Batman number one. Same thing for Cyborg number one. What is same that? Same thing for Flash number one. Same thing for Justice League number one. And same thing for Superman number one. What the hell is it in Essentials? They can catch them up? Uh, no, it's just a, a issue number one for one dollar. Oh, okay, the old school. Okay, yeah. never mind. So it's just a dollar issue, basically. Mm-hmm. So you can get, try number one, they hook you in. Uh, Green Arrow number 27, Green Lanterns number 27, Harley Quinn number 24, Injustice 2 number 6, Justice League 25, Nightwing 25, Super Sons number 6, oh, Superman dang. number 27. Uh, Trinity number 11, and Wildstorm number 6. I did not know this, but this is... Warren Ellis is bringing back the Wildstorm imprint. I don't know if he's bringing back all of it, but he's at least bringing back some of those shitty characters from Wildstorm. And if what? anybody can make shitty characters good, it's Warren Ellis. Why do I know that name? Mm-hmm. Has he done Punisher? Warren Ellis? No, you're thinking of Garth Ennis. Is he the dude who did the uh, girl pilot comic for... No, that's also Garth Ennis. All right, so... Uh, if you read uh, Iron Man um, Extremis, it was a little six-part miniseries that kind of kicked off like the Iron Man that we all know today. Um, that was Warren Ellis. He also wrote um, a Dynamite comic that was actually based on the Project Superpowers. Um, what's one of his big ones? Oh, um, Transmetropolitan, which is a big indie comic. Uh, you should probably pick that up. Um, but yeah, he's done a, a bunch of stuff. I think I just heard him because he gets re- Oh, oh did you read the like Moon Knight? The reboot of Moon Knight? That's the one. That's Warren Ellis, yeah. And very good stuff. Yeah. Made fucking Moon Knight even more crazier. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I, right. knew, I knew I read him. I was like, I know that name. Yeah, I was trying to think of other stuff. But yeah, Warren you Ellis. Gotta, you gotta think back characters that totally <laughs> likes. All right? Moon, yeah, Moon, like that. Moon, that's the reason I got that. So, yeah, for, Moon Knight's uh, <laughs> Actually, Bendis made him really good. Um, but yeah, but I think the reboot made him crazier, made him that better detective style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we'll cover it later. Yeah, but either way, uh, if anybody the, can do that, that's good. Let's get to the indies, man. All right, indies is a short week because there's a lot of shit, and I kind of weeded it out to ones that actually seem interesting or ones that I actually like. And to kick it off, it's Archie number twenty-two because I love Archie. Archie's I. Right. Betty Page number one, and I will preface this. I will preface this. The only reason I put it in, I know there's a lot of people that like Betty Page for some reason. Wait, the pinup model? Yes. I thought you were talking about Betty from Archie. No, no, no. That's Betty some bullshit. They gave her a comic? Yes. It's a new number one. I'm you, picking that shit up. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a fan of the pinup art. Do you, do you want to do you want to know the company before? I, it's fucking dynamite, isn't it? It's dynamite. You motherfuckers. You getting more of my money? God damn it, Dynamite, why do you do this to me? I don't know. But then again, Betty Page is one of the things you gotta buy for the art. She's a pin on Mario. Yeah. She she made the craze that it is still going on now. Yeah. yeah I'm a fan of pinups. Fan of girls with tattoos too. Mm. Enough of that. Continue with the list. They do hit a sweet spot. They do. Colored hair, blue colored hair. Oh. I always got Yeah, fucking just Or purple. Yeah. Any right. color. Anyways, that's all about that. That's a girl cast. <laughs> uh Bitch Planet. <laughs> Triple feature number two. Is uh, something called Bitch Planet? Did mm-hmm. you explain that to me before? Uh, but yeah, Bitch Planet is written by uh, Matt Fraction's wife. Oh, my, she'll probably kick my ass if she heard this. I, I don't Matt remember Fraction. her name. <laughs> you know Matt Fraction? I know Matt well, Fraction. Sh- his wife made an uh, uh, independent comic called Bitch Planet. Um, I don't know how it is because I haven't read it. Hmm. But. Uh, Britannia, who, I'm sorry, Britannia, we, who, number four. It's oh, a, fuck. It's a weird title, but it's written by, actually, a, a writer that I actually do I'm guessing you put, put in a list for a reason. Yeah. Uh, Peter Milligan, that's why. I like I let him choose the ending list, because if it was me, I would just go all covers. And oh, <laughs> and it has Juan Jose Rip? Damn. And David Mack covers? I might have to check this bitch down, because it's looking good. All right, as a weird title, but I will be pr- uh, probably getting that. Anyways, uh, Catalyst Prime Superb, number one. I remember we've been covering some of the Catalyst Prime. Yep. Uh, so, uh, an actual number one might pick that up. 
Uh, Curse Words, number six. Uh, Descenders, number 22. Generation Gone, number one. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I put this in, and I want to, this next one that came in, we're going to be talking about. Because I think it's interesting. I think it's something that people would actually enjoy. Uh, the next one is Image 25th Anniversary Blind Box. And the reason I put this in is because I want to read this description. Each Image, uh, each image Comics 25th Anniversary Blind Box will contain an assortment of 25 polybagged comics compromised of 17 all-new 2017 series and featuring limited edition variant covers only available in this box. Each comic will be bagged in opaque black poly uh, to keep every comic a surprise. Each box may include a randomized mix. The following variants, 25th anniversary variant covers, black and white, 25th anniversary cover virgin, 25th anniversary cover virgin, black and white, uh, 25th anniversary cover uh, blank wraparound sketch cover, extremely rare sketch covers drawn by each series artist, 25 copies per series of the 17 selected uh, launches, exclusive The Walking Dead, here's Negan number one, limited to 500 copies, first 24 pages of Negan's origin story printed in single issue format for the first and only time. Sounds now, expensive. It might be expensive. Uh, but Image does some really good stuff. Yeah, so that's uh, amazing. Invincible? I Invincible, yeah. Invincible is coming really, back. It was really good. Yeah, Invincible 138 is next. James Bond, which I don't like, but James Bond, Kill Chain number one. Lazarus X plus 66, number one. Or that might be Lazarus Cross plus 66. Uh, Who knows? Number one. It's an indie comic. Not too sure, but it's Greg Rucka, and Greg Rucka's the man. Um, does good stuff. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 17. Moonstruck number one. The reason I put that on there is because... Uh, the writer and creator of Lumberjanes. This is her new um, comic, so just something to, to just keep going. And then Rapture number three. I don't know why I put this. Rom versus Transformers Shining Armor number one. Because everybody likes a little bit of Transformers. Yeah, but nobody likes Rom. <laughs> mm. It's a shitty comic. Royal City number five. Secret Weapons number two, which we did review number one a couple of issues past. That was good. Yeah, uh, Sisters of Sorrow, which has an interesting premise. It's uh, basically uh, a house of Witches? sisters, oh, the, uh, of, of nuns, uh -huh. basically, and they're vigilantes. And they oh, they did the whole action nun stuff? Yeah, so okay. it, it just sounds like a fun comic. That I what company is doing that? I don't know. Let's double check for you. Seek Sisters of Sorrow. It looks like... They yeah, that fucking cover looks amazing. Yeah. A nun with two fucking machine guns on each hand. Yeah, two Uzis. Yeah. Uh, it actually looks like the writer is the writer for the comics of Sons of Anarchy. Really? So you might like that? Yeah. A Kurt Soder? Mm-hmm. I still don't know what uh, actual... Uh, Kurt Soder's amazing, dude. Director, writer of Virgin Sons of Anarchy. He's mm -hmm. done a lot. Uh, he used to do The Shield. Oh, okay. Um, I know he he cool. did... Um, he did Southpaw. I don't know if you're into movies, but that was a really good movie. I did want to see Southpaw. Yeah. I just didn't get around to yeah, it. So he's, he's a really good writer. Okay. You know who he's married to? Hmm. Um, Al Bundy's wife. Oh, Katie Seagal? Yeah. Hell yeah. Fucking Lila that, Taranga? That says that's oh, your Taranga wife. Oh, Taranga up there? Hell yeah. yeah. All right, I'm down. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot you're a Futurama dude. I'm a I mean, fucking Futurama. He he married that Cyclops. It's too fucking sweet. Yeah, I've been following since I became a big fan of Sons of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I dove into his stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually got his book, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was like, of course. Nice. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm down. Don't I, don't really, I, don't, I don't follow um, comic writers. Mm-hmm. But if you write a good book I like, I try to track you down. All right, fair enough. And coming up the rear is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe number twelve. Because it's pizza time. Because it's pizza time. Fuck, pizza sounds good right now. Yeah. But either way, it's too late for that. Either way, we do have a few comments actually from our last video. Uh, remember, if you do want to get in contact with us and you're listening to this on YouTube, always comment. Always like, comment, and subscribe, and put yeah. that little 
push that little bell so that you get notifications when we put something up new. That lets YouTube know that you're actually watching us. Mm-hmm. And scary. as far as uh, what's going on with comments, it looks like the prune, our good buddy prune. The king of the trolls. The king of the trolls has said something. He says, release the hair, Tony. Do you want, do you want to do it now? It's already faded, but I used to have it different colors. Yep. There you go, Prune, just for you. All right. He says, I bet you like the floppy, too. I like the word floppy. You, can, you know, I do. Uh, you true. know, he does. Hey, men, they're singles. They're expensive, but they goddamn they bring joy to our lives. He's talking about dick. I know what he's talking about, man. You're not supposed to fucking listen. Okay. Treat me in the fucking fans. You know, it's all right. Calm down. All right. And uh, remember, you can always comment. Uh, comments are always appreciated just because it lets us know we're doing something good or something bad. Uh, either way, it's something to improve on or yep. not. Tell us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Tell us, hey, man, you guys doing a good job? Or you could tell us, you know what, you know what, you should stop because you guys suck. Yeah. Your pick of comics are garbage and whatever. But, you know, you can always let us know what you pick up this week mm -hmm. and what, what's a good trade bag so we could actually review. Mm -hmm. And um, if not, you could always send us an email, too. Yeah, you can always send us an email at citypod88 at gmail.com and just remember to put comics in the title just so I know it's for the show. True. But either way, I think that's it for this episode, right? Thank, thank you for watching. Thanks. We'll see you next week. All right, later, guys.